Hi, this is the Art Center of Coastal Carolina's Faux Marble Video Tutorial. My name is Nicole Nelson and I'm the current Scenic Charge Artist here at the Art Center. And I will be showing you how to faux paint marble. Before we get into the painting, there are three things you need to know that have nothing to do with the process, but everything to do with the process about how to paint marble successfully. One is marble is all about your feelings because any of these steps like spraying it down or using a sponge or spattering can be done with any of the colors really at any time. It just depends on what your research, which we will go over, kind of shows you how to do and what you honestly think is good. Number two, for those of you that are very big perfectionists, marble is really organic and you're not gonna do this perfectly, so don't go into it with that, I have to do it this way and make it look this way mindset. It's very much a, okay, loosey-goosey process of, all right, this needs a little tweaking. Okay, let's do this. Well, okay, this doesn't quite look right now, let's do this. So I highly recommend experimentation before you get into painting whatever it is that you really wanna paint. Um, find what feels good to your body, find what works for you and you feel looks good and get that down in your body before you go to paint on whatever it is that is your finished product. Number three, and most importantly, you're gonna make a mess. So be okay with making a mess. And if you're doing so in your house, make sure that you have a lot of masking out, make sure that you, you know, have covered everything that you don't want paint on because more often than not, you're gonna get paint on something. and then have to clean it up in one way, shape, or form. And it's just easier if you take the time before you start to make sure that all the things that you wanna keep clean are covered. Now we start into the painting process. Um, always start by researching whatever it is that you want when it comes to something like marble or wood when you're foaming a thing. You always wanna have a good reference of what it is you're doing so that you can look back at it when you're painting and mimic it because Otherwise you're gonna end up breaking weird rules in nature or lines and they're not gonna look the same. And then when you look back on it later, you're gonna be frustrated because it doesn't look the way that you want it to. So always keep your reference handy. Now let's get to the materials you need. I recommend two different sponges, sea sponges, um, a couple of tiny brushes for when you get to the veining portion, a toothbrush if you would like, a feather if you would like, a string if you would like, rags, a nice brush, a spray bottle that can do a mist filled with denatured alcohol, acetone, or water if you are uncomfortable with either of those chemicals. Um, this is primarily to, once we get there, separate the paint and cause it to not like itself. And it comes apart a little bit in terms of the chemical makeup and it makes a really pretty finish at the end. Um, your color palette, and this I want to stress, the color palette on marble is key. You need to look at the colors that you're gonna be using, generally three to four to five, depending on what marble it is. If you're doing a really complicated marble, it can be upwards of 10 to 12. I'm keeping the marble fairly simple, so I've only got four colors here. Color palette is key. Make sure all the colors work together, make sure they look good together. You wanna nitpick them and then start. Make sure you look at them all together with each other, all that kind of stuff. Pinterest is really handy if you need color palette tips. Um, so I have my color palette here and a bucket of water. So you wanna start with whatever your base coat is. And I typically do that as either the lightest color in the marble or the darkest color. So in this marble that I've got here, you can see that there's this very light white all the way at the back. And it's kind of popping through those darker colors. And I like to start light. This is primarily because when you're painting, light is really easy to cover up. It is not easy to bring back over a darker surface. So I always like to start with my lightest color as my base and then do my darker colors on top. Other scenic charges, Sometimes we'll pick to do the darkest color first and work all the light colors on top. It really just depends on the marble and it really just depends on what your gut's saying on how to approach the project. Like I said, marble's all about feelings. This is one of those feelings call. So I always start for my first layer. 
I start with the second lightest color other than my base. That would be this kind of ghostly yellow that's back there. And so I take one sponge and I dip it in my paint. I keep this paint rather thick so it's out of the can and not watered down at all, typically. And find a part of my sponge that is interesting. I get off quite a lot of it and then just go. So as I'm looking at my reference, my lines for this marble are very directional. And I'm gonna mimic that when I go to apply this layer with my sea sponge. So I'm gonna mimic these lines that are very diagonal. And I'm gonna apply heavy in a section and gradually get lighter. Keep turning your sponge. That is key on your hand. Keep turning it so that it has different sections pressed down and vary how much paint is in one section versus another section. Once you get a section, a little section painted, you wanna take your other sponge. I like to keep two different sponges rather than one. Dip it in water. And then you're gonna sponge over what you just painted. And there are sections, especially where you went heavier, that you wanna keep that heaviness there. You just wanna pick up the paint a little bit and then as you move through to the lighter sections of sponge, you wanna pick up a little bit more if you got a little bit too much down. This is to kind of ghost in those colors and start that process. Because if you, most marbles, not all marbles, because there are so many marbles in the world. <laughs> there are so many. Every time you will be painting a different marble and it'll be slightly different. You'll just have to compensate for that. You want to get those ghost colors in, at least in my experience first. The earlier, the better. Now I take my sponge, or rag, sorry, and I kind of dab at where I've just sponged with the water. This is to kind of help ghost in those colors and pick up some of that paint. And if I've gotten a section too colored and wasn't able to pick it up with the water, I can definitely pick it up with the rag. This works really well in helping control the amount of color and paint is on your piece. All right, now that I've got that section started, I'm gonna keep kind of going here. Keep applying, apply that heavy line, work down work back up, keep turning the sponge. Now go get some water. Marble projects take a long time and one of the key elements to maintain is patience. Especially if you're going to cling to whatever reference source file you have and are truly going to attempt to replicate it. It's going to take a lot of patience because sometimes you're gonna try something and it's not gonna work and then you're gonna have to go back and kind of figure out how to fix it and ease whatever it is in there so that it doesn't look like an outlier. Marble in terms of painting is really all about patience. All right, now that I've got that done, time to clean tools before you go to the next layer. All right, now that you've got that layer, fi that layer finished, I recommend throwing a fan on it, make it go faster in terms of dry time, or you can just sit and watch. That's definitely how everybody does it. No, we don't. You should have something that kind of looks like this, mimicking whatever lines of your marble directionally are going. Now you wanna pick kind of the next darker color this is gonna be when you start really putting in those shadows in the marble. And you're gonna be putting on less and less with each color. Keep that in mind, because that is really important. So now we're gonna take the next color in our palette with a clean sponge. Do the same kind of thing. Dip, get a lot of it off. And now, especially for this marble, because the color concentration is really around where those veins are. I'm only gonna apply the shadow where I think these veins are kinda gonna go later. 
So I'm gonna pick my lines very carefully and I'm only gonna sponge a little bit on. And definitely heavier where I think those lines are gonna be heaviest. You also only wanna work in small sections once you get here because once it dries, you can't, yes, you can reactivate the paint with water. No, it's not gonna reactivate all the way. And the key is keeping everything wet. There are marbles where occasionally this helps. Because sometimes what you really need is an outer rim of paint that isn't dry all the way and you need to wipe it away so you still have that shape or the rim that did dry. And what's great about that is that it leaves you this paint outline of where the paint used to be but isn't anymore. It still maintains that color and shape. And there are some marbles that really do utilize that a lot. All right, now that I've kind of got that applied and watered down, now I'm gonna take my rag again and sponge off where I don't think it really needs to be. This is where if you have had that instance of the paint drying on you a little too fast, you can kind of get some of it off. This way you don't overtake those ghosted in colors. It's kind of insurance, think about it like that. All right, now let that layer dry, clean your tools. And when we come back, we go to the next layer. All right, this next layer is gonna be a spatter layer. And this is particularly, once you've hit the points where you don't wanna sponge any more color on there, you're kind of done with that step of the process, I tend to go start going into, uh, depending on how complicated the marble is, into the spatter layers with multiple spatters. In this case, because it's a relatively simple mar marble, all I'm gonna do is bring back this base a little bit and spatter the base on top of this. And for this step, we're gonna be using a chip brush our base paint and our sprayer filled with whatever chemical of your choice or water you would like to use to pull that paint and keep it from and to keep it separating on itself because what that does is really give you a ghosted look to these dots. Acetone and denatured alcohol I tend to prefer because it works better in terms of pulling the, the fibers of the paint itself apart and making it come apart chemically. That being said, if you aren't comfortable with working with these chemicals, I wouldn't recommend working with them. It's just really depends on your comfort level. Water will do the job, but it just doesn't separate it quite enough is really what I feel. I also wouldn't recommend super hazardous chemicals either for this process like xylene or anything like that. That's almost too hardcore for what you're doing. Just an easy, nice, fairly friendly chemical. I mean, it's a nail polish remover. It can't be all that bad you know, for something like this. Um, all right, let's get my brush wet. Now we're gonna go for our thinned base paint. I wanna keep the paint thinned at a ratio of about one cup of paint to half a cup of water for this because I, you want it to have some body, but not too much. And now you're gonna throw it. And it looks like this. Keep in mind, you really can't control this. This is very much as gravity and the brush dictates. There is very little left to uh, what you want. You can kind of throw directionally if you want, but sometimes you get a little bit more oomph that way and then that causes you have to go back and spatter more layers. So this really is a feelings call once again. And now that I've got that done and handled, I'm gonna get my paint out of the way. I'm gonna take my sprayer and I'm gonna mist it down. Like I said, this causes these dots to get a little nice fuzzy edge on them so it's not a hard edge and really causes the paint to start to separate chemically from itself. And then I kind of take my rag and I just dab it over those dots very slightly so that it leaves them there, but it just helps with that ghostly look. This is a great way of getting whatever that top layer is that looks ghosted over all those other layers on. A trick that was shown to me 
surprisingly very early in my career and is one that I have kept for many things because it works very well. Now you wait for this to dry and then you come back for the veining process. All right, this is kind of the final step before you seal and put a clear coat on here. For a marble, you absolutely need a clear coat to bring all these different layers and textures together at the end and make it just look finished. Um, I recommend a semi gloss sheen for this because all marble is stone and shiny. So you need something that reflects a little bit. But after you've spattered, you should have something that looks like this. And now we go to the veining layer. And that's where all these weird assortment of tools come in. I prefer to vein with brushes. It's the fastest way to do it. And on the scale, I tend to work at where I measure my work by a distance of 40 feet. Does it look good? Does it look like what the picture looks like? It works well because I can vein then quickly over large amounts of scenery and have it look to scale. When you're working up close like this close, brushes might not be the best call. Something like a feather might be the best call or string. Lots of charges use these as opposed to brushes to get the right kind of veins. And it also depends on that. So I'm also gonna show you veins with those tools as well as my own pre uh, preference. Now, when you look at a marble, the veins are your darkest or they're your lightest. They're generally the white in a colored marble like blue or green. Um, on this, they are the darkest yellows and they are just the little slivers of color that cut through. Um, I recommend holding, if you are using the brush method, holding it like this and picking whatever size brush you think will work. Generally, I use about three different sizes. I have my sliver veins, I have my medium sized veins, and then I will pick a large vein brush and work with those. Sometimes I don't need all three. I can get what I need depending on what I'm doing with that. I do recommend thinning the veining color at about the same ratio you thinned the spatter. So one cup of paint to half a cup of water. This will give you an easier ability to do those thin sections and have it go farther. Primarily the reason I'm holding the brush like this is because it's uncomfortable and makes for an unnatural looking line, which works very well for something that as organic as marble. You're not gonna replicate lines. Don't try to paint a straight line. It won't look good. And the easiest way to make marble look fake the fastest is to put too many veins in. So this is where reference material really becomes key because you don't wanna be overdoing it on these veins. All right, brush. Now, this is the logic part. So they're gonna go where this darkest color primarily is, and they're kinda of gonna outline it. And if you pick up the brush a little bit, that's okay. It's all about hitting sections and making this vein look organic because nature wasn't created by man. So there's not a straight line in nature. So these lines are all gonna be curves and jags and jogs and things that are very unnatural. And that's what you're attempting to replicate. Don't try to make sense of the madness just paint the madness. It's about the best advice I can give you. All right, now for the string. All right, you gotta get the string really dunked in that paint. And like I said, you're gonna make a mess. Don't worry about the mess, just make it. Depending on the veins, sometimes that method works. That's part of the reason why I prefer brushes. I also don't do string veins or feather veins. And now feather time. This one I'm actually gonna have more success with. Ooh, there we go. Boom. All right, 
Once that's dry, you should have something after you've put your clear coat on, of course, that looks like this. Be warned, do not throw a fan on any kind of a clear coat. It will cause the seal to fog or bubble. Neither one is good and neither one is pretty and you will have to start over. But you should have something that looks like this once you're at the end of it. Just keep following that logic of building these colors gradually and carefully and intentionally putting the colors where the reference material tells you to. And that's all you have to do. Thank you for joining us at, on this video tutorial from the Art Center of Coastal Carolina. Have a great day.